I'm Harley Smith, and this is the Master Growers Course. Today we're going to be continuing our series on integrated pest management, and we're going to focus in on organic, natural insecticides and organic sprays that we can use for fighting pests and disease. In part one, we talked about developing protocols, start clean and keep it clean, finding strategies implementing strategies to prevent pests and disease from even entering your grow room or your grow room environment. In part two, we talked about increasing the plant's natural resistance to pests and disease, growing high bricks plants that are naturally resistant to powdery mildew, to gray mold, and to common sucking insects. But sometimes, no matter how careful we are, Nature finds a way and we get an infestation or the beginning of an infestation of pests or disease. In that case, we need to fight them. We need to bring in an arsenal to fight those pests before they have a chance to get established and to infest our entire garden. One of the first lines of defense against pests and disease are insecticidal soaps. They're safe all the way to the day of harvest and they work in a physical way. They actually block the breathing pores of the insect and suffocate them. Now, if you're going to use an insecticidal spray with an insecticidal soap, you want to make sure, though, that you have very thorough coverage because they work on contact. You can't just spray it around and think it's going to work. You have to have thorough coverage. So you cover the tops of the leaves and you cover the bottoms of the leaves underneath because often that's where the webs are or where the eggs are on the bottom side of the leaves or in the cracks and in the crevices. So if you're going to use an insecticidal soap, you need to be very thorough in the coverage. My personal strategy for using an insecticidal soap is, first of all, turn off the lights so I'm not sh uh, doing the sprays in the middle of the light under high heat conditions. Because if you do it in the middle of the day, it can clog up the breathing pores of the plant, the stomata that bring in CO2. The stomata are also used by the plant to cool themselves down with transpiration. So if you spray in the middle of the day, you can burn your plants. So turn the lights off first. Turn your fans off. Do a thorough coverage, top and bottom. I even like to use a pump sprayer so I can reach underneath in hard to reach places. Until I keep spraying until there's dripping at the edges and the ends of the leaves, the tips. Then I stop my spray, wait until there's no more drips from the, from the edges of the plants. Then I turn my fans back on until it dries out a little bit on the surface of the leaves, and then I turn my lights back on. That way I'm taking the stress off the plant, but I'm going to hit more of the bugs. It's very, very important too to, for hitting the spider mites to shoot or to use your insecticidal soap or sprays at the end of the day instead of at first thing in the morning. When the temperatures are still warm, when the lights are on, the insects are going to be more active. They're going to be out and feeding. They're going to be laying eggs and reproducing. If they're active, you have a better chance of making the contact st spray work, actually hitting the bug that you're trying to knock down. If you did it first thing in the morning when the temperatures are cooler, the insects will be less active. They may be hiding uh, overnight when the cooler temperatures, you're going to miss more of them. So the best time to do it would be at the end of the day, right before the lights go out, uh, when the temperatures are still warm, but you're not going to stress the plant. Your next step is to make improvements to your insecticidal soaps or sprays. Now, one of the things I discovered early on was the use of essential oils. And this is how I discovered it. This was back before I had the Start Clean and Keep It Clean protocol, when I was bringing in plants from outdoors. Bad idea. You bring in plants from outdoors, you're bringing in every pest and disease with them. Well, that time I had my very first outbreak of spider mites and I had some white fly. So I made an insecticidal soap. Now, what I noticed though was that the white flies were infesting my fruits and vegetables, my tomatoes, but they weren't even landing in my herb garden that was right next to it where I had rosemary. So I talked it over with my wife and said, what's going on here? They're more attracted to one kind of plant than another. So we got the idea, 
let's add an essential oil. We took some of the clippings from the rosemary plant, threw them in the blender when we were making the homemade insecticidal soap, and then we used that as a spray. So the contact spray of the insecticidal soap killed the bugs on contact, but the aromas from the essential oil acted as an insect repellent. It kept the adults from coming back and laying more eggs. So over the course of the winter, instead of having more and more and more bugs, I had fewer and fewer and fewer. By the, it didn't totally eradicate them, didn't kill every single one, but there were just a few of them flying around and they were no more than a, a nuisance and they weren't harming the crop. Another really good additive to an insecticidal soap, kelp extracts. Now, we know that kelp extracts have a benefit on the plant itself. It has over 62 beneficial trace elements from the sea that aid with the plant's natural resistance to pests and disease by activating enzymes uh, to make more natural plant protection agents by the plant itself. Uh, but also the kelp extracts have hormones that pull the nutrients into the tissue. They pull in the sugars, they pull in the amino acids, they pull in some of the trace elements in water to activate enzymes to fight disease. Now, seaweed has another benefit too when you add it to integrated pest management. When you add it to the spray, the kelp extracts have uh, abrasive molecules in them that cause lesions on the insects so that the insecticidal soap penetrates the insect more effectively so the insecticidal soap works more effectively. So not only do uh, uh, seaweed extracts improve the health and vigor of the plant, they also improve the effectiveness of your insecticidal soaps. Another tool in the arsenal in integrated pest management is neem oil. Neem oil has natural pesticide agents in them. The active ingredient, though, is a molecule called azadiractin, and you'll find it in many of your sprays. So neem oil works well because it has azadiractin in it. It's an anti-molting agent. It keeps the bugs from growing up and laying more eggs. You know, spider mites go through, through several stages of developments before they reach full adulthood and maturity and start laying eggs. So if you can stop them from growing up, you break the reproductive cycle. You break the reproductive cycle, you're gonna win. Because instead of having more and more and more spider mites over time, they'll, they'll feed, they'll finish off their life cycle, and they'll die, and you'll win. So neem oil works because of the azadiractin. Also, azadiractin is an anti-feeding agent. It makes the plant impalatable to the insect. So they don't feed on the leaves, and they starve to death. Now, the best time, though, to use the azadiractin is with the juvenile bugs to keep them from growing up. It's not as effective on the adults that are already laying eggs because they've already molted. They've already reached maturity. So use that in your arsenal early in the process. If I bring in clones from outside in my start clean and keep it clean process, I'll do three treatments with a product with the active ingredient as a directin. Now the neem oil is great by itself, but it's a little bit oily. It's, a, it's an oil. You need to kind of warm it up or else it will coagulate. It makes it hard to spray sometimes. Also, you can build up residues on the leaf over time that can add off flavors. So I like to find in, uh, sprays that have as a directin as the active ingredient without the oily part. So it's, uh, it doesn't build up residues over time. So when I'm pre-treating my plants, especially early on, at the first sign of any insect infestation, I'll do three treatments. I'll do a first one to knock down any of the, uh, of the uh, spider mites that are already there. I'll do a second treatment three days later because sometimes the eggs will hatch in just a matter of days. So if a new egg hatches, I want to knock them down again. And then a few days after that, just to make sure that more eggs weren't laid, in the meantime, I'll do my third treatment. One, two, three, punch. And at that point, I know that I have clean plants, that I've broken the reproductive cycle. Another way to improve the effectiveness of your natural sprays is to add 
pyrethrum or look for natural sprays that contain pyrethrum. Now pyrethrum is a natural insecticide. It's going to work better on the adults. Pyrethrums are a natural extract from chrysanthemums, special strains or varieties of chrysanthemums. The way it works is that it affects the nervous system of the spider mite or of the insect. When you spray it on them, it opens up the sodium ion channels inside the nervous system of the insect. It opens those ion channels and then the insect can't close them back up. So the spider mite or insect electrocutes itself from its own nervous system, from the inside out. So it's very effective, even in small amounts on insects, but it's relatively safe for animals or pets or human beings. Also, the pyrethrum it has a very short half-life. So even in a matter of hours, it's going to start to degrade and it's not going to build up to harmful levels on your plants. So it's important though that you hit the, again, use a contact spray that hits the insect uh, because it's not going to have much of a residual effect later on. An alternative to insecticidal soaps are horticultural oils. They work in the same way as insecticidal soaps, but a little more effectively. They clog up the breathing pores on the mites, so they suffocate. Also, the plants will not develop a resistance to the horticultural oils. If you use insecticides with the same active ingredient over and over again, the insects develop a resistance to it. You're accelerating the evolution of the bug because if you spray a, something with an insecticide in it, it'll kill most of them, but the insects that have a natural resistance to that active ingredient, they're the ones that survive and they lay more eggs. And then their prodigy have some of those same genes that have the resistance to that pesticide. So within a few generations, something that worked very effectively at the beginning as an insecticide doesn't work anymore. It just makes the insects nervous instead of killing them. So I recommend using insecticidal sprays, natural ones that have different activities, different ways of affecting the bugs. So the pyrethrums work well. It knocks them, knocks them down. The insecticidal soaps will will suffocate them. So will the horticultural oils. Insects aren't going to build up a tolerance to suffocation because it's working physically. The horticultural oils have an additional benefit though. It kills the bugs in all stages of development, including the eggs. Those uh, The oils in the horticultural oils will desiccate. It pulls the water out of the eggs and kills the eggs as well. So if you have a insecticidal soap, it can be effective against all stages of growth, not just the adults. So the key to be effective in an integrated pest management system is to find the bugs, identify the, the infestation early. The earlier you find the infestation, the more targeted you can be in knocking them down before they have a chance to infest the plants and then spread out and ruin your garden. So if you have to fight insects, make sure that you're using an organic pesticide or organic spray that are rated for your crops. Make sure they're rated at the very minimum for food crops. If they're only recommended for, say, ornamental crops, don't use them because there's the potential of doing harm to human beings. Also, make sure you read the labels carefully because you could use even an organic spray. If you use too much of it, too high a concentration, or too often, residues could build up that could still do harm. So remember to follow directions carefully and follow all of the safety precautions, even if it's a natural organic pesticide. Thanks for attending today's class on integrated pest management. Remember, follow protocols, grow healthy, vigorous plants, and use organic sprays if and when necessary. Thanks again. I hope to see you in future classes.